Don't worry about the, the time because, see, let, let, let me explain something to you real quick. Don't worry about the clock. Don't worry about the time because, see, last night I did something, Sister Zelda. Well, Pastor, what you talking about? And I'm glad that you asked, Miss Mary. What did God do last night? Oh, yes. Why are you sleeping? Oh, yes. And then when you woke up this morning, we have extended daylight. That means it's going to be lighter longer than it was on yesterday. That's enough to give God praise. Thank you, Lord. So there's only two things that I ask that you do, Brother Quentin. Please, sir, pray with me. Yes, sir. And pray for me as we go to God in prayer. Merciful and gracious God, I don't want to stand on this holy ground or behind this sacred desk with a long prayer this morning. But oh God, I do want to come and tell you thank you. Thank you for the dawning of this new day with the new grace and new mercy, with new life, new health, new strength, the use of my limbs and being in my right frame of mind, and then I'm once again able, Father, to walk and stand on this holy ground behind the sacred desk, ready, willing, and able to be used by you. Yes, sir. But, oh God, I just have one problem this morning, and that problem is I cannot preach until the preacher comes. Yes, sir. So, as always, I invite your presence, yes. the presence of the angels and the Holy Spirit. Just to come and wrestle with the Bible with us for a little while behind these consecrated walls yes. at the Trinity A.B. Trinity. Yes. Now I said to just move James out of the way. Oh, yes. Let me decrease and you increase in me. Let the words of my mouth yes, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Yes. Now release me yes, to preach, proclaim, and declare your word oh, yes. unto your people. These and all the many blessings we ask now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 I have a few notations that I put up here. Yes. I always ask you when you hear scripture being read to take note of the scripture. And yes. the scripture that was read this morning was... Uh, Job 2nd chapter verses 1 through 10. Um, I'm not going to read that, but I'm going to go and read verses 11 through 13, uh, which completes that whole chapter. Job 11, Job chapter 2, 11 through 13. And then we'll find these words. When Job's three friends, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite and Zophar the Nemethite heard about all the troubles that had come upon him. They set out from their homes and met together by agreement to go and sympathize with him and comfort him. When they saw him from a distance, they could hardly recognize him. They began to weep aloud and they tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. Mm. Now, brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for God's people. Somebody should be able to say thanks. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> I want to go back and lift up verse number 12. And 13. And those words simply say this, my brothers and sisters. Please hear me when I read these words. When they saw him from a distance, Brother Eric and Brother Freddie, they could hardly recognize him. They began to weep aloud. And they tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was, Sister Dawn. 
I want to bring something to your attention. When God gave me this sermon, now He likes to talk to me when I'm laying down and and, and I guess maybe trying to rest, Sister Denise. But you can't rest when God is talking to you. So I, God says, I want you to go into the scripture because somebody in Trinity needs to hear this. And I want you to bring back to their remembrance what happened when you preached your 20th sermon at Trinity. Today will be sermon number 57. So on your reach, I'm going to let you go ahead and research and find out what was the 20th sermon here at Trinity. And it was preached on Sunday, March the 26th. I can tell you that, uh, Ms. Mary, because I keep all my sermons. And I went on the computer and I said, Lord, which one is it that you directed me right back to? True story. I went and clicked on one particular sermon. March 26th popped up. And I'd like to talk to you for just a few moments. Sister Mia, from the subject of, aren't you glad you don't look like what you've been through? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that particular sermon was preached here on the 26th of March last year. But God wants that preached again in here today for somebody. Yes. So I'm going to be obedient and do the best that I can do to preach God's words to God's people. Quentin, I know you've been going through a lot. Ms. Brunson, I know you've been through a lot. All of you have gone through some. Some of you are still going through. I'll tell you every Sunday I can see your faces. But you're not where you were. But when you look in the mirror, thanks be to God, you don't look like what you've been through. Yes, so here we take a look at the scripture that was read from verses 1 through verses number 10, where Satan was roaming around. How many know that Satan is roaming around looking to move in? So the rest of the angels came and appeared before the Lord and Satan came along with them. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, where did you come from? He said, I was just roaming around. Job had nothing to do with this. If you really read it, Job had nothing to do with this because he was an upright man. He had everything that any of us could imagine or ever want. But he was an upright man and he was a righteous man. See, God will honor your faith. And God said to Satan, why don't you try my child or my servant, Job? He's upright. He shuns evil. He lives righteous. And Satan says, skin for skin. If you allow me to get to him, I'll have him curse you to your face. But God says this. He sacrificed him to a certain degree and said, have at it. But you can't have his life. So Satan also told God, I've been trying to get to him. But you had a hedge around him. I couldn't penetrate him. Because you blessed him. You kept the hedge of protection built around him. You kept him under the blood of the lamb. When God, my brothers and sisters, got a hedge around him, I don't care. The weapons will be formed. But in the name of Jesus, they will not prosper. So God says, you can deal with him, but you cannot have his life. Yeah. So Job began to get sick. 
And I'm going to pause there for just a moment there. I want to take you somewhere as we are in the Lent season. How do you feel? Those of you that have given up something, how are you feeling? How is life treating you? You know, when you're used to doing something for a long time and you give up something, <coughs> Sister Maya, Mia, you give up something, your body goes through a change. Yeah. And as we're in the Lent season and this is the fourth Sunday of Lent, how are you feeling and how are you making it? Is your body transforming? And I say that to say this, uh, has anyone looked at the marquee when you came up? Has anybody seen the marquee? I know you're a person of detail, Sister uh, Walker. Tell me what's on the marquee. I didn't look at it this morning. She didn't look at the marquee this morning. Sister Walker's not here with us today. She's uh, feeling a little ill. We had one out last week, but that one, she's back now. She's pulling the double. Amen. Um, the marquee says these words. And it's going to tie right into the sermon. God has a plan for your life. Amen. Ain't that right, Sister Mary? Amen. So I looked at that and I went, I immediately went and I said, now there's some scripture that goes with that. Brother Quentin and, and, and Miss Rosa and Sister Bradley, I found out that in, I believe, uh, Sister Mia, it's Jeremiah 29 and 11 that says that God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Yes. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Is that right? Can I get a witness? Yes. yes. All right. I, I thought I'd throw that out there to tie in with the sermon for just a little bit. So here we're taking a look at the sermon. And God has given Satan okay to go ahead and attack Job. Yes. And he does attack Job. Job began to be in so much pain until the Bible says that he's taking a piece of glass and he began to scrape his body. And he sat in sackcloth and ashes. And we're in the Lent season and we're going through 40 days and 40 nights of fasting or giving up something. And, and there's going to be some pain in these days uh, that you're going through, whoever's going through. And then it says that his three friends... Uh, they got together and they met in agreement to meet, um, to come and go and sit with Job. And the scripture simply says, Brother Quentin is, when I look back there at, at, at Brother Freddie and, and Brother Eric, I could barely recognize them because of the pain and suffering and the sickness that they're going through. Well, well, Pastor, where are you going with this? And I'm glad you asked. I'm going to take you back in time for just a minute. Remember back in the days when we were in high school. Or remember back in the days we were in college. Uh, and there was that uh, cute young lady um, that we all saw. What did they call it? The queen valedictorian of the school. And there was that promising athlete, uh, Johnny Bungard. Uh, all the girls said, oh, he's so fine. Girl, did you see he hit that jump shot? And then we get together, oh, Quentin and Freddie and, 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 and Pastor along with Eric said, man, that thing is so fine, but I need to get with her. You know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. You know what I'm talking about. I got to paint this picture for you, though. And then after high school or after college, you didn't see them anymore. And then all of a sudden, there's the class family, the, the class reunion. And then here comes uh, Johnny Bungard and all the girls like Denise and Miss Mary, uh, Pam and, and, and Rosa and, 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 and Shook Avery is all up in there too and, and friends and Reverend Jero and, and they in the group together of me and they said, oh, Pepe Jack, is that him? <laughs> oh my God, is that Johnny? And then me and Quentin and, and Freddie and, and Eric, we get together and, and the valedictorian, uh, Sister Janice Brown, we get together, we like, 
is that her? Did it, are you, what happened? And then we all get together, the fellas and, and the girls, and we want to know what happened to Johnny Bungard and Sister Brown, and then we begin to talk and, and realize that this thing called life uh, had taken control of them. Uh, they're no more the valedictorian. Uh, they're no more the promising stars. Uh, we can barely recognize them uh, because of sicknesses, uh, bad relationships, uh, bad marriages, uh, children, uh, stress. Uh, diabetes, uh, cancer, uh, we cannot recognize them uh, because I come to ask you, uh, was you one of them uh, that went through these times? Uh, but aren't you glad uh, right now uh, that you don't look like uh, what you've been through? Uh, and I've come to tell somebody, you ought to give every praise to your God uh, because when you went through uh, where you couldn't be recognized, uh, God kept you, He never left you, He had a hand around you, He brought you through, He brought you through. Aren't you glad? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. That you don't look like. Mm -hmm. I need some help with you today. Yes, sir. What you've been through. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to testify about me. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was one of those good athletes in school. Basketball team. Swimming team, even went to college and played college basketball. But then Sister Dawn, living in the big city, not having a father figure, which is not an excuse. Then life, I was introduced to life. And there was sometimes Brother Freddy that I was so torn up from the floor, my family didn't even want to be around me, didn't even want to acknowledge me. But I come to tell you what people say. Well, ain't that that cousin James? That can't be him. Yes, that was cousin James. Is there anybody in the building that's been through that? Yes, sir. Is there anybody in the building that got caught up with life? Is there anybody in the building that had a bad relationship? Is there anybody in the building that had a bad marriage? Anybody in the building uh, that was dealt a bad hand, uh, that life uh, took you over, uh, where people couldn't recognize you. Uh, when I come to encourage you today, Miss Dawn, uh, I come to tell somebody, I come to serve somebody, uh, your gift, uh, your gift, uh, whether you go through sickness, uh, your gift, uh, it looks good on you. Uh, I ain't talking about your dress. I ain't talking about your hairdo. I ain't talking about your suit. I ain't talking about your tie. I'm talking about God's grace and God's mercy that kept you, never left you, brought you through, brought you out. Can I get a witness in here for that every praise? God is a God of second chances. Yes, he did. You might have been that promising athlete. Yes. You might have been that valedictorian. Mm. But Miss Brunson, yes, Lord. Brother Quentin, yes. this thing called life. Yeah, <laughs> this thing called life. Yeah, Lord. I had been such a pleasure that people won't recognize who you are. Yes. But I come to tell you, somebody that's been through something uh, can recognize you, uh, can recognize uh, it ain't nothing but God's grace, uh, it ain't nothing but God's mercy uh, that kept you. Uh, I look back over my life, uh, I can tell you, Sister Pam, I should have been dead, I should have been sleeping in my grave, but God looked beyond my faults and saw that I had a need. Thank God for his grace, thank God for his mercy, thank God for his love, thank God for dedication. Thank God for his faithfulness. Thank God in the name of Jesus. And I don't look like what I've been through. Sister Joanne, I know you're not able, but you should be dancing around this place. Brain surgery. I have other people in here that's been through some sicknesses. Been through some trials. And through some tribulations. Why you got a chance, you better get in the praise. Yes, 
Why you got a chance you better give him the face? Why you got a chance you better give him the honor? Why you got a chance you better give him the glory? And thank God that you don't look like Miss Green or what you've been through. Some of you, along with myself, has been through some hell and high waters. And some of us are still going through. But when you leave here today, this is what I want to challenge you to do. As the Sunday school lesson said, examine yourself. Go look in that mirror, Miss Dawn. Look in that mirror and say, Dawn, look in that mirror, Freddie. And say, man, I'm looking kind of handsome today. Not because of the suit that I got on. Not because of your earrings. But because of God's grace. Because of God's mercy. I come to tell somebody. And I come to show somebody notice. Uh, that God wanted this sermon uh, to come back in Trinity. Because somebody's been through something. Uh, somebody's still going through something. Uh, and he wants to say, uh, at one point in time, uh, you was not recognized. Uh, they didn't know who you was. Uh, but I come to tell you today, uh, your gift, uh, it looks good on you. Uh, you're wearing it well. Uh, nothing to today. Uh, new grace. Uh, nothing but today. Uh, share a new mercy. Uh, somebody ought to be able to give God some praise. Uh, somebody ought to be able to give God some thanks. Uh, somebody ought to say hallelujah. I've heard the stories for almost two years. Yeah. When I first came here, I know what you all look like. Mm. You're progressing. You're progressing because I can truly and honestly say that some of you, when I first came, you were going through church hurt. Mm. You were going through sicknesses. Mm. You were going through family issues. You were going through ups, you were going through downs on your jobs and your home and your family and your school and your community. But I can say one thing. Your gift. <coughs> Sister Mia, Mia, Maya, it looks good on you. Yes, sir. I'm not talking about the hairdo that you went and got done at the, at the beauty salon. Come on. I'm not talking about that wonderful jacket that you got on, Sister Cheryl. Herb Jerome, I'm not talking about the bracelet or the glasses. Yeah. Sister Montgomery, I'm not talking about the robe. Mm. Brother Lee, I'm not talking about that ring you got on. Mom, I'm not talking about that necklace. Yeah. Miss Mary, Frizz, Zella, yeah. Lassandra. You may not feel well right now, yeah. but I'm come to tell you and remind you to even ask you, Aren't you glad in the name of Jesus? Aren't you glad in the name of the Father? Aren't you glad in the name of the Son? That you don't look like uh, what you've been through. Uh, because we all been through uh, our ups. Uh, we all been through uh, our downs. Uh, we all been through drugs. Uh, we all been through alcohol. We all been through the streets. Uh, we all been through this. Uh, we all been through that. But thanks be to God for his healing powers. Thanks be to God he didn't take his hand off of you. Thanks be to God that you don't look like. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. What you've been through. Yes, sir. I should have had five people running around this church. Today. But some of you, you want to sit there. But you're here on prayer. You're here because somebody prayed for you. You're here because of God's grace. You're here because of God's mercy. I come to remind somebody that when I went through my time, when I went through what I went through, my mother couldn't answer for me. My father couldn't answer for me. My sister couldn't answer for me. Neither could my brother. All they could do was pray for me. They pushed, they prayed until something happened. And what happened was God meets way down. I mean way down. And deep down, he picked me up. He turned me around. Like both of my feet were a solid bound. I am so glad I don't look like. 
What are we doing? One of these days, one of these days, the Holy Spirit is going to hit you. And you're going to stop worrying about him and his grief. You're going to stop worrying about her. And you're going to get your praise on. Because you ought to be glad that you don't look like what you've been through. Job suffering. God allowed it. See, it's like your supervisor at work. Your request for time off got to come through his or her desk and be approved. God approved this because he honored Job's faith. Now, Job didn't need anything. He didn't need anything because he had everything. But at a point in time, when you continue to read on, Job lost everything. Yeah. But he held on to his faith. Yeah. Mia, Maya, I got to get it right. Yes, sir. He held on to his faith. Oh, yeah. And if you just hold on, mm -hmm. there are going to be some days that you're going to go through. Yeah. And people are not going to recognize you. Yeah. But if you hold on, God will bless you. Oh, yeah. He'll bless you with everything that you need. Yeah. He may not come when you want him. Oh, but good God Almighty, he'll always, uh, he'll always, uh, Children, he'll come through with your husband, he'll come through with your boyfriend, he'll come through with your girlfriend, he'll come through. Because that's what he do. I'm so glad. Sister Fritz. Oh, yes. Sister Zella. I can't tell y'all stories because I got my own. But I'm so glad. I'm so glad, Eric. Because if it had not been, good God Almighty, as I look back over my life, uh, if it had not been, uh, if it had not been, uh, I wish I'd get somebody to say it. If it had not been, uh, but the Lord uh, that was on my side, uh, where would I be? Uh, I'd be in my grave, uh, sleeping dead. I feel all right. Yes, sir. Because when I think about the goodness oh, of Jesus yes, yes. and all that he's done, yes, sir. this Mary, yes, sir. things that my father couldn't do, yes, sir. things that my brother couldn't do, yes. my sister couldn't do, yes. my mother can do, yes. only God can do it. Yes, yes. So I come to tell you, Brother Quentin, as many times you have come to church, and I know what you do, I almost didn't recognize you because of what you're going through, yeah. what you're dealing with. Yeah. God, I want you to say these words, my brother. Yeah. I'm so glad that I don't look like what I've been through. Yeah. Yes, sir. Is there anybody in here? If, if you don't mind being honest with God, you yes. don't have to be honest with me, because he already knows. Yes. Is there anybody in the building, Sister Dome? Yes. Have you ever been tore up from the floor? Yes. Busted. <laughs> Disgusted. Yes. Couldn't be trusted. Yes. But I come to tell you, God restored you. God renewed you. God made you over. He gave you a new walk. He gave you a new talk. He gave you a new song. He gave you a new praise. He gave you a new hallelujah. He gave you a new thank you, Jesus. That's why I'm glad that I don't look like Sister Denise.
believe so. What I've been through. I gotta go. God's word will not return back to him. Yeah. Yes. Go back and read the story for yourself. Mm -hmm. And just know today and for this week that you ought to be glad, yes. Sister Dawn, that you don't look like what you've been through. Because you've been through yes. some stuff last week. Oh, yes. And all you want to do is just get out the way and go straight home and shut the door. Yes. You don't want nobody to see you. But now that you got this new grace, friends, yes, and you got this new mercy, I'm not ashamed of who I am. I may be ashamed of what I've done, but that's behind me. I press forward, looking towards the prize, and I look to the hills for whence cometh my help. Because when I was down, they stopped me. When I was down, they spit on me. When I was down, they hit me. But God moved them out of the way, and he reached down. Way down, and he picked me up, turned me around, placed both of my feet on a solid ground. I told you once, I told you twice, I'm gonna tell you the third time. I'm gonna preach, I'm gonna teach, I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna dance, I'm gonna shout because I don't look like what I've been through. Nothing but God's grace, nothing but God's mercy. I still can't get no help. But I come to tell y'all, if you don't want to have church, I'll have church all by myself. Because when I look back all of my life, he brought me over hills, he brought me over mountains, he brought me through the valley. I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. God kept me, he never left me, he prepared a table before me. In the presence of my enemies. And he anointed my head with oil. Today my cup runneth over. And I will dwell. I will dwell. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm glad I don't look like what I've been doing. Take us home quiet. So in other words, 
I don't look like what I was going to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you, Jesus. Is somebody praying for me? Yes, Lord. Yes, sir. Brother Freddie, they had me on their mind. Oh, yes, yes. And for those of you at home, I want you to know whether you're on the couch, yes. at the table, in the bed. Look back over your life. Yes. And thank God that you don't look like right now oh, what yes. you've been through. Yes, sir. Even last week. Yes. And going through the storms. Yes. Don't just give him the praise when everything goes good. Yes. Don't just give him the praise when you get your income tax. Yes. Okay, see, right now, when we're going through income tax, yes. Reverend Jerome, everybody's looking for a tax exempt. Yes. But you ought to know, Woo. preachers ain't exempt. Good God Almighty, yes, help sir. me somebody. Yes, sir. Preachers are not exempt Amen. from trials. Preachers are not exempt oh, yeah. from tribulations. Preachers Woo. are not exempt. Yes, sir. <clears throat> but we are built oh, yeah. for tough. Yeah. We built, Brother Eric, like a heavy shed. Oh, yeah. Good God Almighty, I wish I had some help in here. Oh, I'm not going to preach again. I'm not going to preach again. Yes, sir. But I want to get that out, Sister yeah. Fritz. That's right. You got to come to the throne. Boldly, God says, yes. come boldly, yes, sir. knowing that he's going to pull you through. Oh, yeah. He may not do it today, yeah, but if you just put your hand in God's hand and hold it, yeah, I heard Lee Williams said the road get rough. Yes, sir. God Almighty, it really gets rocky. Yeah, but if you stand the course, the yeah, way he tested your faith, uh, if you just hold yeah, and hold out, uh, everything uh, will be all right. Uh, everything I didn't come here for that. I didn't mean that. Oh, yeah. But now's the time, Sister Cheryl, we're going to open the doors of the church. Yeah. So just in case that there may be one that's sitting or standing amongst us, as we ask you to stand, if you're able, that don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, it doesn't matter what you've done on last week. It doesn't matter what you've done on last night. You still have another glorious chance while the blood runs warm in your veins, you can come and give me your hand and give God your heart. And he will clean up what you look like when you went through. Will there be one today? There may be one that's sitting or standing amongst us that's looking for a church home. And you'd like to make Trinity Amy Church your church home. My staff and I will in no wise cast you out, but we will bring you in and nurture you under the fold. Will there be one? Will there be one? If you desire prayer, you can come down to the altar just as you are. We will pray with you. And we will pray for you. Will there be one today? Will there be one?